Hey folks, it's Dr. Mike. We're back here for the second day of the 11 myths of medical exercise training. Now we went over one through six yesterday. Let's go back over those. Medical professionals recognize fitness certifications. We said that's not true. MDs don't know exercise and won't refer. Again, some MDs do know something about exercise. The majority don't, but it doesn't mean they won't refer. Number three, MET is basically corrective exercise. Definitely not true. I don't need to speak with medical professionals. Again, definitely not true. MET does the same as physical therapy and chiropractic care. Definitely not true. As a medical exercise professional, stay in your lane and the need for medical exercise training will grow exponentially over the next two decades. Stay in our lane, do what you're supposed to do. We're not providing the same services as physical therapy and chiropractic. And lastly, MET is best in a large fitness facility. And again, we said yesterday, it's probably better that the medical exercise training be done in a one-on-one -on -one setting, either in a client's home or in a smaller studio, but it can be done in a large fitness facility with dedicated medical exercise professionals working one-on-one -on -one with clients, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's done best in that setting. So let's talk about numbers seven through 11. Now, insurance carriers won't pay for medical exercise training. Folks, I said that back in the mid-1990s, that insurance carriers were never going to pay for post-rehab services or medical exercise training. I had to actually swallow that one and recant and say, you know what we're finding? Medical exercise uh, training is being paid for by insurance carriers as long as you are 100% clear on your credentials when you communicate with the insurance carrier, 100% clear on the services you're providing, to the insurance carrier, and most importantly, the doctor understands who you are and the client clearly understands who you are. There's no misconception that you're providing any type of medical services. So insurance carriers are paying for medical exercise training, and we do have a couple of medical exercise specialists that have become providers with insurance carriers. Number eight, I don't need to market to medical professionals. Now, you know what, folks? This one is a little crazy also. I've had some of our MESs say this, and I think it really is more of a denial uh, uh, situation that's going on. We find that trying to get out and talk to doctors, therapists, and chiropractors is probably one of the things that for most medical exercise professionals is really, really causes quite a bit of anxiety. So the idea of saying I don't need to market to them or communicate with them makes no sense at all. You do need to market to them, but not just simply market to them, market to the general public also. Now, here's my thought. Client comes in and you've posted something on social media or you've sent out a mailer in the community or put uh, mailers on door hooks and client comes to see you. Well, when that client comes in and you uh, communicate with the doctor to get a release uh, or medical clearance uh, completed, guess what? That now gives you the right to communicate with that doctor on an ongoing basis. So the idea that you don't need to market to medical professionals, uh, no, not necessarily so. You still need to communicate with them. Communication does require some aspect of marketing uh, or does involve some aspect of marketing, but the idea of you don't need to market to them, that just doesn't make any sense. You need to make them at least aware that you're in the community and what you're doing. They may never refer a client, but it still makes good sense and it's good business sense to make sure you do market to medical professionals. Number nine, medical exercise training is strength training for medical clients. Actually, it's not. It's not just simply, okay, we've got a client here who's had a, a CVA or a client here with total knee replacement. We're just going to do some strength training. Folks, it requires a lot more understanding of clinical anatomy and pathology and assessment procedures and how to apply exercise with this client and their particular medical condition or diagnosis. So it's not just simply strength training. Number 10, everything I need is in fitness journals. Now, folks, this is one, especially as we move into the 2020s and beyond, that we need to move away from. The idea of continually reading the fitness journals uh, that are coming out in the fitness industry and utilizing or using that information to say, here's how we manage medical conditions utilizing exercise. We need to spend more time looking at uh, medical journals that are published by medical professionals in the medical community. Uh, the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, Spine Magazine, Physician in Sports Medicine. These are some of the periodicals we need to start looking at as well as attending um, 
conventions and continuing education workshops that are actually designed for more medical professionals. Now, I know the first thing you'll say is, Dr. Mike, those are hard to attend. Sometimes I'm not allowed because I'm not a therapist or a chiropractor. I certainly understand that. And there's certainly some that will exclude you, but there are many others that will allow you to attend. So one thing I would say here is, Everything you need is not in those fitness journals. You need to expand your scope of reading and understanding to medical journals as well as to attending medical continuing education workshops. And lastly, I'm only a trainer. Medical pros won't listen to me. I've heard that one a number of times. And you know what? I would say probably in the beginning, back in the mid-90s, that was probably true. But folks, here in the United States, we're seeing... American citizens take more interest in their health care and their wellness and well-being and taking more charge of improving their lifestyles, living healthier lives. And with that, now when they go into the doctor, they're asking the doctor about exercise. They're asking their therapist about exercise. Now, when the trainer calls, the physician and therapist, as well as the chiropractor, and nurse practitioner, are more open to the idea of communicating with the um with the medical exercise specialist or even the, the personal trainer. So this idea that you're a trainer and the medical community won't listen to you, that's kind of gone out the window now. Now, let's make sure that what you're saying is appropriate, that you're saying it in a competent and professional manner, and it's accurate. But the idea that medical professionals won't listen to you, that's kind of gone now, folks. In 2020 and beyond, I think we're finding that more individuals coming over from the fitness industry as well as the medical exercise training community are getting more recognition with the medical community and are being looked upon as professionals and providing information that is very important in the overall management of the medical professionals' patients. So thanks for watching. We've gone through all 11 of these myths. If you have questions about these, email me at drmike at postrehab.com. If you want to subscribe to our blog, go over to postrehab.com slash blog to subscribe. Thanks again. All the best building your, your practice.